So one of the most common questions I get asked is, what is the right sword for 133? 133, in case you don't know about it, is a manual which deals with combat between two people armed with sword and buckler. Now, I want to go into a few things about this that I think are important. First of all is the length of sword and the type of sword. Now, if you remember in my previous videos, I spoke about it being somebody else's knife. And I think the same thing carries on into sword work, and it's a very important thing to take into consideration when dealing with any kind of sword work. First of all, I would say I know it's very tempting to go, I want there to be a particular kind of sword which is exactly and completely appropriate for this system, that this dates from exactly the 13th of January 1340, and this is precisely the length of sword we use. And we know because he owned it, but we don't. What we do know is that the manual uses and illustrates different lengths of swords, whether it's a problem with the artistic style or whether they just didn't care because it's a fencing system for fighting against someone who has a sword, not a fighting system for two people with precisely exactly the same length of sword. Secondly, I believe that this variation in blade length is actually a very, very important thing. Even if you take Girard Thibault's perfect proportions for a blade, whereby the blade should measure from your navel down to the floor, if you have somebody who's five foot ten and somebody who's six foot four, both using their perfect proportion swords, those swords are obviously different in length in the blade and obviously in the reach of the person using them. So this variety is fundamental to the sword art. If we therefore have variety within the manuscript, and then we have also variety implied by a perfect proportion of a blade for somebody. I want to show you something else that colours our judgement as we go into this. Now I've been into lots of muse museums with friends of mine in the sword community and we've all gone and we've got to handle the swords and we've gone... No. Mm. Now this, this handles like a real sword. And this is an important thing because what's happened is our favouritism for a particular kind of feel, our own internal feeling of how a blade should feel like, has coloured our judgement of the past. Now we're in a situation there where all of these swords are real. All of them come from a medieval period, renaissance period, and yet we've gone, we've picked them up and gone, this is the one. But no it's not. It's our judgement, our choice colouring the past. If we therefore assume that people's choices in the medieval period, in the Renaissance period, prior to that, were coloured in the same way as ours were, by their feel, by their decision-making process. The balance for this feels right for me. The length of this is right for me. The fact that I can move this shorter blade quicker is right for me. If we assume those same choices were being made by those people, the correct length of blade is the correct blade for the person who wants to use it. Within that, I would stipulate a degree of limitations. So there are certain things which I would expect from a sword for 133. Now again, I'm going to pick up these blades and I'm going to show you a little bit how differently they measure if I just put them on the floor like so. I have three different swords which I generally use in training for 133 in the class. Now you can see there is a significant difference in the length and reach of these blades. However, they all have one thing in common. The unifying feature of all of these blades is that if I hold the sword like so and I stoop, then I can cover my head easily, making sure that the strong of my blade is in the way of their blade. Or if I go like so, I can cover myself all the way from my head down to my knee. Now, Providing I can do these things, actually the length of the blade is fairly irrelevant past that point. Some people prefer a longer sword for 133. And I myself used to think this was a better way to go and I think it encourages people to fence in a little bit more of an interesting way. However, it's completely unimportant as long as you bear in mind the principle about the cover that I just showed you. Now, there's a gentleman called William Cavendish and he wrote a manual called The Truth of the Sword. This, I believe, has got an awful lot of correlation with 133. And it says one fundamental truth, which I think is very, very important for people to understand when doing any kind of swordsmanship. And he says, the journey of the sword 
is but to the sword or to the hand or to the body of the opponent. Now, this is fantastic because what it does is it tells you that no matter how long your sword, in order to hit me, you have to bring it to me. You can't avoid, do, avoid doing that. It must come towards me. So what he does with his system is he makes sure that he is in such a position that in order to hit him, you have to come past the cross guard. And this involves a lowering and a flattening of the body. Exactly the same thing you see in Fabris, exactly the same thing that you see in 133. This means that the length of my sword becomes less relevant, the length of your sword becomes less relevant. Because it doesn't matter, I cannot reach your body, or I cannot reach your hand, your blade will become presented to me. So if your blade is coming like so, it's going to have to come across my cross guard or below my cross guard. It's going to give me something to make contact with. And you're not able to control the weak of my sword because the weak of my sword is up, up to the side or down. In all of these cases, it's out of the way of your forte. So you can't control now, this distinction. This way of finding the blade works whether somebody has their point forward and extended or whether they have their point back. Because as long as you can reach the sword first, you always have something to cross on your way in. And because you're not committing to parrying with big swinging moves here, you don't really open yourself up on either side. The moves are very, very tight, very, very covered by your shoulders. And exactly the same with 133, precisely the same thing. We're trying to bring the opponent into this small area which we can control very, very easy without losing control of our sword out of the centre. This also means that if our opponent decides to approach us and hold the sword out of the way, like so for example, if they do so, they present a target, whichever the target is, because they're keeping the sword away from us. And that obviously makes things an awful lot easier. It also means again that the length of the sword is not so important because a sword which is held away from us over here, its length is irrelevant until it comes back to us and then again the point is given to us. This doesn't mean that you can't use a longer sword for doing 133 or for Cavendish and of course this means that if you do use a longer sword a lot of these distances will occur sooner. So as soon as you come from this position here and you drop your point into line then obviously you're going to be able to do that from further out. Now you'll still be subject to those same behaviours that you'll still have to cross your sword but the bonus is you get time to change. Now again this comes down to personal choice. Um, my feeling on the matter is that you should try as many different lengths of blades as possible to see how this works. And I've done this with long swords, two-handed swords this is, I've done this with rapiers, like so. We train this using rapiers on Monday quite often. And the system works exactly the same. The only difference between Cavendish and 133 is that you're safer with 133 because you have the buckler in front of your hand. It doesn't matter the length of your blade as long as it obeys those criteria that I said that it must be able to cover you down as far as the knee when it's inverted and above your head when you're stooping and the point's up. As long as it does those things, it's not so important. You're going to have to either work your way towards the opponent, covering both sides of your body through turning, or you're going to have to reach out and touch that person a little bit earlier and suffer the consequences of not being able to uncross maybe quite so quickly. And again, those are personal choices. Now, as far as the degree of hand protection, you should be able to do 133 or Cavendish with very, very minimal. You should be able to do this with a cruciform hill. You should be able to do it with a meso. You should be able to do it with a buckler and without a buckler. Obviously if you do it without a buckler your hand is more vulnerable. Learn to do it without a buckler. If someone has a complex hilt and you're going against them you're going to just have to work against someone whose hand you can't hit. Fundamentally that's not very different to fighting against someone who keeps a buckler in front of their hand all the time. You have to locate a different target and you have to draw the blade out in order to manipulate it. Again this isn't really dictated by blade size you just have to deal with these things. The thing to look at when deciding what kind of blade to look at for 133 is what blade do you like? What blade has your opponent got? Now historically this is going to be incredibly incredibly varied because first of all your choice of blade is decided by you, what you've bought. Secondly your opponent's blade and their buckler shape, their buckler size, all these things 
are decided by what they chose to get, maybe what their family owned. Who knows, you know, the sword might have been in their family for generations. We don't know. It might have been one that they just picked up. They might just have a machete or a messer or whatever is equivalent at the time. We don't get to make those choices. So those things in mind, yes, it's nice to have the same kind of sword as everyone else in your club. And fundamentally, a lot of the time, this is what it comes down to. We like to be a part of a club. Oh, yes, my instructor says that we need a 12.7 foot sword. It's the right thing for us. It's not that important. You should learn to fence with different ones. So have a look at the blades that cover that period in history. Have a look at the size that you like. Find out what feels right for you and use that sword. So when you're choosing your blade, you make a choice. You all have noticed that I've started talking quite a lot about William Cavendish in relationship to 133. I don't know whether there's any kind of historical connection between the two. However, they share a lot of stylistic similarities and tactical similarities, which I'll address in other videos because I think you'll find them very interesting. In the meantime, thank you for listening. I'll speak to you soon.